Hey, you all, Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from the South. More specifically, Atlanta, Georgia, and even more specifically than that, I am in front of the world of Coca-Cola. This is a museum, an experience, an attraction dedicated to the world's most favorite sugary beverage. They're Christmas decorations, these giant uh, Christmas bulbs. It says Coca-Cola on it. They have Coca-Cola worked into the holiday theme. And see here, often uh, they do use Santa Claus in their advertising. Often polar bears are associated with Coca-Cola due to their famous Super Bowl commercial. However, in real life, polar bears do not do not subside on Coca-Cola. They live entirely on flesh. This here is Dr. John Pemberton. This is the man that invented Coca-Cola. Very interesting story, actually. Uh, John Pemberton here, one thing they don't talk a lot about was he was actually a Confederate soldier fought in the Civil War and was seriously injured. He actually took a sword to the chest that was that caused him severe pain, severe injury, and uh, because of this severe injury, um, he would turn to morphine and would develop a severe addiction to morphine. Morphine, a very serious drug. Morphine addiction, still a very serious problem to this day. So, this Confederate soldier, addled, addled with morphine addiction, he sought to find a cure for his morphine addiction. And so he developed Coca-Cola, which he thought would help him cure his morphine addiction. Unfortunately, Dr. John Pemberton, in the, in the realms of drug treatment, was a complete and abject failure. No one, no one will, will tell you that uh, Coca-Cola is any sort of cure for drug addiction will, will, will not help. If you're addicted to morphine, please get help. Go to, go to a rehab center. Do not just guzzle cans of Coca-Cola. They will not cure your morphine addiction. However, happenstance, serendipity, the beverage he created, the, the anti-morphine beverage of Coca-Cola, turned out to be incredibly delicious. And uh, Dr. Pemberton here was able to to, to put forth and create the most popular beverage in the world. So a strange story involving a sword to the chest, massive drug addiction, and a delicious sugary beverage. And still to this day, no one knows how he did it. No one knows what secret ingredients, what, what he wrote down, what, what all his scientific anti-morphine research led him to create this still a secret but the secret lies somewhere in here not necessarily to the public but it is it is it is supposedly locked away in this very building so let's head inside if you listen closely the building actually makes soda noises do you hear that Have to go in and get our temperature checked before we enter the attraction. Hello. Can you take one of these? Let's go with Coke Zero. Thank you. First thing you get when you walk in is a can of Coke. It's even in this hygienic bag. So double bag because of can and plastic bag. Look at these cool old vending machines. I miss the vending machines with these big buttons. It's always satisfying to hit those big old buttons. In the rafters here we have these different Coca-Cola signs. It seems that uh, all these diners across the world have these Coca-Cola signs. 
And look at this, look at that thing. What is that? It's like a little furry ball with lips. Ooh, I don't remember this mascot. Is he some sort of snowman? Pouring ice into the Coke? I don't know, is maybe he breaking off pieces of himself and putting it in the Coca-Cola? Now, if I remember correctly, these weird characters you see in here, I think they are characters that used to be in a pre-show cartoon, but I don't think they even use that pre-show anymore. Walk into the theater here. Normally, I think they would show a pre-show here, but I don't think we're doing that right now because of social distancing. Not sure exactly what's happening here. Do a dance number. Some presents. So well, that is for the polar bear. Oh, he's smiling. Oh, he's dancing. And bust the move. Okay, this is this is pretty amazing. All right, we're gonna get in line to uh, meet the Coca-Cola polar bear. Yeah, one of the things about Coca-Cola is though, it does have that natural Christmas color to it. To protect the bear during the pandemic, you have to stand uh, behind a velvet rope that's to not get too close to the bear. Hey, Mr. Polar Bear. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I loved the dance moves. Those are so good. Aw. So cool. Oh, we're for the pictures? Okay. Oh, 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 there you go. Hey. There's one. Oh, claws. Okay. The claws. Act like I'm cold. Act like I'm cold. Oh, brrrr. Oh. Here we have the vault. This is the actual vault where the secret Coca Cola f formula is kept. I believe there is only one, maybe two copies. But uh, one of the, the, the copies of the actual recipe of Coca-Cola, the unknown recipe, lies within this vault. You see they take this very seriously. They have this very intense safe door here with the bottle logo in the middle. Here we go, into the vault. It says, at the heart of, of Coca-Cola, there is a secret. Looking at this security footage. Oh, look at that. There, oh, I saw myself for a second. Now, broke it. blanked out. The man, is it the man in the hat? What's, what's going on here? Oh, there, there, there's some footage of me right there. They're watching, watching us from every angle while we're in here. It says, like an alchemist of old, John Pemberton used a long wooden paddle to mix the first batches of Coca-Cola syrup. There's some, Reproductions of Pemberton's notebook. It's, they're worn, difficult to read. Oh, there is some, I do make out some, some bits of the recipe there. I don't know, maybe these were like the experimental batches. Apparently these are other um, things that Pemberton created that were not as popular as Coca-Cola. Globe flour, cough syrup, Indian queen hair dye. We well, want some of these gingerine triplex liver pills. Compound extra extract of still ingia. Queen's the light. I don't know, they all sound like solid products to me. Looking for the secret? Yes. Some products she made to find in a pharmacy in the late 1800s. And some get, get pick up some carbo cell. Some cactus polish cleaner. Is that for polishing your cactus? During the first year's Coca-Cola sales average a modest nine drinks a day. So they used to sell nine Cokes a day. Now they probably sell them more. Look in here. This is alert. Imposter. 
What's that? This is not a Coca-Cola. This is a Prince Cola. A no good off-brand Prince Cola imp Prince Cola imposter. You can see on the ground there's all these different fake Cokes. Afric Africola. Never tried Africola. <laughs> if you have drank Africola, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. What's this one called? What's this one? Rockola. Well, that's a kind of cool name. Oh, you can see the shadow of John Pemberton as he mixes and toils, trying to find the perfect recipe for Coca-Cola. Myths and legends. Rumors persist that Pemberton didn't create Coca-Cola by himself. People have claimed that Pemberton had help, bought or stole it. Did he steal it? Look at those eyes. Is he a man that would steal a soda recipe? It's whispered that the original formula originated in India. A small town in Spain proudly proclaimed itself as the birthplace of Coca-Cola. This woman, Diva Brown, claimed to have cracked the code so that she was selling her authentic Coca-Cola formula. Can science unlock the secret? Gas chromotherapy fails to yield conclusive results. All right, getting ready to enter the vaults of the secret formula here. The doors are now open. See so off on the side at this time. Oh, and there it is, the vault. The vault where the secret recipe of Coca-Cola lies within. This vault holds a handwritten copy of the original formula. It was brought here December of 2011 to commemorate our 125th year anniversary. So if you want to step up and take a photo, you can. All right, let's step on this dot right here. We're allowed to get our selfie with the infamous Coca-Cola ball containing the original recipe written by John Pemberton. Very cool. But you're entering milestones of refreshment. This is the more traditional museum section of the world of Coca-Cola. See this old soda fountain here with a soda jerk handing us a soda. Not that he is a, a jerk and the fact that he is mean or rude or, or hateful to people, but that was the name of the person that would work behind the uh, soda counter. One of the employees was telling me this clock here is one of the most valuable artifacts in the whole museum because it is one of the only Coca-Cola items that it has a blue design. It's very difficult to find a Coca-Cola item that has a blue motif. Here we have Pemberton very carefully mixing and concocting the uh, Coca-Cola recipe. Try See some of those classic Coca-Cola items, merchandise. I like this Coca-Cola kite right here in the middle. Look at this old syrup fountain here. And if we look at the label, we can see not marketed towards helping you with morphine addiction, but it is does say it is for tired nerves and brains. So a bottle of Coca-Cola originally cost a nickel, so as you can compare it to some of the other things at uh, the time in the early 1900s, a cup of coffee cost 10 cents. So Coke cost half, half the price of a cup of coffee. Let's see, 25 cents for a gallon of gas. So you could get, uh, you could get five Coca-Colas for, for a gallon of gas. Let's see. What's this, a haircut? 25 cents for a haircut. Yeah, so Coca-Cola was pretty inexpensive. The toothpaste, 25 cents for toothpaste. But everything, a car, even a car cost more than Coca-Cola. We have a nice, shiny Coca-Cola delivery truck. This is an old bottle capping machine. Workers would actually operate it with their foot. You can measure your pressure in foot pounds, so I'm hitting that 750 mark pretty good. Of course, this really is tiring on my poor little leg. So they would do 350 bottles an hour, probably more skilled than me. 
there's a variety of different uh, Coke machines. You can see this old school ones. Oh, look at this German one. It only has Coke, Fanta, my favorite, and Sprite. These really have just like an elegant beauty to them, don't they? Check out this wacky Japanese version. What is that there? Is that, oh, they actually had coffee and tea in the Coke machine. And possibly the craziest Coke dispenser. That is a Coke dispenser from uh, the Soviet space station. That is a that is space Coke. It is crazy. You can see the bottles are modified so that you can drink them in space and refill them here. That is a truly amazing artifact. It's a wide variety of Coca-Cola advertisements over the years. Man, they really need to bring back the, uh, the, the Fanta Orange Clown. I would drink even more Orange Fanta if they brought back the clown. There's some Coca-Cola, Russian nesting dolls. Let's talk about the Coca-Cola company worked many of the Olympic torch relays. These are all Olympic torches, which is pretty amazing. There's the Atlanta 1996 Atlanta uh, Olympic torch. So during the 1996 uh, Summer Games here in Atlanta, I was actually living in Indiana. I was a teenager. I was in northern Indiana just looking out front window of my house in my, in my living room just looking across the street, not doing much of anything. And then completely unexpected, the Olympic torch, the runner with the Olympic torch or the cop car and a runner holding the Olympic torch, another cop car right in front of my house. Completely did not expect it, was not looking for it. Just one of these complete random surreal experiences. Did not realize this, but Coca-Cola briefly owned uh, the Columbia Pictures movie studio. And there is the uh, Academy Award for uh, Gandhi, best picture of 1982. For all the different beverages that they sell around the world, quite an interesting, Assortment. Some of these you don't even realize are Coca-Cola products. There's High C, Five Alive. Does anyone else remember Five Alive? And then there's uh, some soda, some lion-based soda named Simba. There's something called Bebo right there, and uh, Aquarius water in a bag. And then this is pretty crazy. They actually have a can of OK. Cola. This is one of Coca-Cola's biggest flops. It was a, it's a really strange story. A soda based on irony and nihilism. So the top selling brands made by Coca-Cola. We have a standard Coca-Cola drink, Smart Water, Fused Tea, Georgia Mountain Coffee. Apparently it's popular in other parts of the world. And um, that Japanese water, I think? Then, of course, Fanta, Orange Fanta, one of their best selling, my absolute favorite Coca Cola product. Heading into the Bottle Works. This is a replica of a Coca Cola bottling plant. It's a syrup tank. Imagine if you drank all the syrup in that tank. I bet you could feel your teeth falling out. Now, sometimes I believe the plant is actually operational. I've seen them. Uh, working before, but the last couple times I've been here, it's not been working. I don't know if it only runs part of the day, or maybe it no longer runs. I'm not sure. All right, now to ascend the grand staircase to the second floor. Here's the pop culture section. I think that is some sort of pun. Pop being a, another name for soda. Shows some different uh, Coke paraphernalia from the various eras. This is 1886 through 1969. Then 1969 to the present. That is a goofy looking hat right there. Although I do love this uh, Coca-Cola machine robot. Do not believe I've ever seen the one gallon Coca-Cola can. This is Coke Creations, this is folk art made out of coke cans other coke items now i have seen this in different folk art uh, that, that i've seen that coca-cola does appear to be popular 
amongst folk artists. You can see the uh, Coke can giraffes right there. A big old Coke can alligator and some vehicles over there. We got an airplane, a ship, a couple cars. And look at this Coca-Cola heart right here. It's a Coke canosaurus. Here's a small but powerful exhibit on new Coke. The, uh, the, the decision was made to change the recipe, change the flavor of Coke, to go against John Pemberton, to reject John Pemberton and try to make something that tastes more like Pepsi. And apparently it only lasts 79 days. I didn't realize new Coke was only around for that short period of time. I do believe they kept it around as a secondary soda, but still a classic disaster. I guess these are internal documents. This is, this is the biggest uh, the center of shame here in the world of Coke. And to reinforce what a big deal this was, the Atlanta Constitution on the front page put that the old Coke had returned. And there's Max, Max Headroom. He seriously frightened me as a child. Something about him sketched me out. This Coke bottle here actually made by Howard Finster, probably the most famous folk artist of all time. Love his designs. Visited his uh, Paradise Gardens here in Georgia. And this couch here was actually used in 2005 on American Idol. You used to actually be able to sit in it. They got this roped off probably because of the pandemic. This is a user submitted Coke stories. Different people that have written in, tell about their love for Coke. Some of them are in different languages. I believe this is the newest section here at the World of Coke. The Scent Discovery Center. Oh, wow. So, we're going to play a little guessing game, all right? You're going to get to challenge your sense of smell on these three profiles. We have sweet, fruity, and spicy. So no need all right. That's, that's coffee that clears your palate. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to play. Guess the scent. Round one. It is our sweet profile from the blue beaker, the blue class. Give it away. I smell this blue. Is it lavender? What is it? What is it going to tell us? It is. The answer is honey. Honey. Well done. Clear the nose palate. All right, can I smell the coffee beans to clear? The nose palate. For those of you who didn't get it right, all right, the fruity profile from the. Oh, Mel melon of some sort? Definitely, definitely, definitely think it's, definitely think it's uh, some sort of melon. I mean, I don't know if it's a watermelon, maybe. Let's go with, let's go with, uh, what's that, what's that green melon? Honeydew melon. Five. What is it? It is. Melon, okay. We nailed that one. Let's see what the spicy profile is. Is it licorice? Everyone's sniffing, sniffing here, trying to figure out what the spicy taste profile is. Oh, someone said anise. That's actually a good guess. What is it? Time's up. The answer is and what said it is star anise. Anise is there. Oh, it was anise. Probably the most popular room in the world of Coke, the tasting room. Taste it. Don't know how they're doing this currently with the pandemic, but we will find out. Enter here and follow the arrows. All right, so they are doing this a little differently for the pandemic. Normally you'd be able to roam this whole room and each one of these stations would be a different country or area. You could taste the different flavors from that country. But now uh, because of the pandemic, they give each person their own personal station with a select list of sodas to try while here. So these are the sodas that we get to sample here. We have a Japanese Vegeta Beta, Peru's Inca Cola. I think I've had that before. I think that's good. Sweden has Lingonberry. Korea has Joy Apple Lychee. Uh, Tanz Tanzania. Tanzania? Am I saying that right? Tanzania, I'm sorry. Stony ginger beer. Zimbabwe has Sparletta Sparberry. 
We have Costa Rica Fanta Colita and the infamous, the most infamous drink here, Beverly, the world's worst soda. Now that we're socially distanced, we'll remove the mask in order to sample these sodas. All right, first up, Japanese Vegeta Beta. Thank you, thank you. No, it's interesting, it has a carrot, a carrot and a white apple on the logo, but carrot can actually add um, quite a bit to a fruit drink. It's actually very good, very, very fruity, light taste. I feel like I'm reviewing wine here, but I would drink that. Definitely more of a, you know, a fruit. Almost tastes like you're drinking fruit juice. Or just a good, good soda. Okay, this is the Inca Cola. Very, it's interesting. Almost a cream soda type flavor. Again, that's another good one. That's something that I would drink recreationally. Swedish lingoberry. A lingonberry. I don't know what a lingonberry is, but... It's a berry flavor. Very subtle berry flavor, not too sweet. It's a good, it's another good one. These are also, these are all pretty good. All right, this is Korean. Korean apple joy, Korean joy apple lychee. Very, very sweet. This is a really sweet one. And then it has this apple flavor in it. Does lychee mean milk? No, lychee is a. Leche is milk. Lychee is. Lychee is a type of fruit, I think. That's. Good, a little bit on the sweeter side, but but, but it's still good. All right, this is stony Tanzanian ginger beer. Ooh, that's good. It's like that ginger ale type. It's one of those ginger ginger ale's like a really strong bite to it. These are all very good. I have a feeling they have the limited selection here, so I feel like they've chosen these international flavors that are actually good because some of them you know some of them are just not for American taste buds but these are all good so far this is Zimbabwe Sparberry never heard of a lingonberry I've never heard of a spar berry no, give it a try it's like a cherry it's very much like a um, oh maybe more like a strawberry a strawberry type soda Kind of like similar to Fanta Strawberry. And this is Fanta Colita from Costa Rica. I, Fanta Orange is my favorite Coke product. Um, I don't know what Colita is, let's find out. Hmm. Yeah, kind of a, it's almost similar to the Sparberry. Some subtle differences, but very similar to the last one. So we've had a chance to try all these wonderful foreign sodas, and now we get to try the worst soda in the world, Beverly. Now, spoiler alert, this is gonna taste bad. Um, Beverly is what is on an aftertiff. It's um, apparently like the Ital Italian tradition. Maybe they take a shot of liquor um, before a meal to clear their palate. It's like a, almost like a non-alcoholic version of that. So almost like a non-alcoholic shot of liquor. If that makes any sense? Um, it actually said I was reading with the, the information they had. They don't make this anymore. The only place you can get Beverly is at the World of Coke. So they don't sell this commercially. They just give it here so they can have one soda that is super gross and super nasty and they actually said if you go by just people what people want to try this is the most popular drink to try here at the world of coke so the world's worst soda the world's most popular sample at the world of coke mm. it tastes like 
Ugh. Tastes like all the bad parts of cough syrup with all the good parts taken out. Oh, they used to have this at Disney. Um, they had a, a sample like this at Disney. I think I drank 10 once on a challenge. I'm not sure how I did that. This is really... It's been years since I've had this. Oh, gosh. It's so bad. So bitter. And I have said before, there is a slight sweetness. It really glows with that. Yeah, this is just, this is, this is really, really crappy. Hey, what's this? Cookie Coke. Cookie Coke, holiday yeah, cookie this Coke. This is the recipe. Oh, thank cookie. you so much. Thank you so much for dropping by. <laughs> so this is, a, I guess they, they have uh, specialty recipes, and today they have uh, cookie-flavored Coke, so. Taste, doesn't taste that different from regular Coke. I'm thinking Coke kind of tastes like a cookie already. <laughs> All right, and we exit here through the gift shop. You can see the Coke merchandise. Very plentiful here. Got a big orange Fanta pillow there. Some uh, specialty items here. A solid crystal can of Coke for $250. Or a uh, bedazzled can of Diet Coke for $2,395. <laughs> Bud. Some Coca-Cola based face coverings and some Cokes that will charge your phone. Chapstick. So great to be back at the World of Coke. A really, really iconic location here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, that added the Smell Lab, which is a very cool addition uh, to their attraction. Um, the, the taste room, I, one thing I was wondering, um, I almost was wondering about, about how about whether or not I should come because I didn't know if the taste room would be open because of the pandemic. I didn't know how they were gonna handle it. You can't have people wandering around with their masks off in this giant room. But I think they, they think they handled it probably the absolute best that, uh, that they could. Uh, I think that was a really good idea. Um, it's a shame you can't try all the flavors, but that's just not practical in today's modern times. Um, but they gave you a really good selection of different sodas. They were actually, I think they, as I said, I think they picked like the best, probably most popular flavors that people respond to. And then of course they throw Beverly in there because everyone wants to taste the world's worst soda. But uh, yeah, very cool and I highly recommend checking out the World of Coke uh, when here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, if you'd like to see other places I've been, please check the interactive map down in the description of this video. It'll show all the different places I've been and you can tell me where I need to go next. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also now selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that is in the description of this video. Until next time, this one's in the bag.